Now, Chinese tech giant Huawei, of course, becoming the proverbial chess piece in this tense trade situation between Washington and Beijing. Here for a further discussion about China and Huawei, uh, we're joined this morning by Robert Spaulding, a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute and a former National Security Council senior director in that role. He penned a memo calling for a government takeover of 5G development. Also, John Rutledge, CIO at Santa Fe and a CNBC contributor. Good morning uh, to both morning. of you. Uh, Robert, you know, you saw this new deal get made uh, between uh, President uh, Xi and, and, and Trump which is going to allow at least some U.S. companies to supply uh, Huawei uh, with, with technology and equipment. Does that make sense to you? And is that a security risk? So um, moving into the G20, there was, uh, there was a concern, and I had heard the rumors that there was going to be a deal on Huawei. So three of the things that I looked for coming out of Osaka were, uh, was Meng Wanzhou going to be released from her indictment? Were, um, was Huawei going to be released from the entity list? or was the executive order on Huawei going to be rescinded? Um, if you listen to the entire um, press conference that uh, President Trump gave, none of those things were broached. So in essence, when you look at enforcement with regard to national security in Huawei, there's been fundamentally no change in how the federal uh, government <clears throat> is dealing with Huawei in terms of enforcement. So you think this is smoke and mirrors? I think it was rhetorical in order for President Xi to save face and for us to get the talks back going um, again. Oh, I think, no, but my understanding, if you're Micron yesterday, if you're any, there are 30 U.S. companies, 30 plus U.S. companies that do business regularly with Huawei uh, that now plan to at least either continue that or, in fact, increase that. Well, they're going to have to go through the Bureau of Industry and, and Security, and what they're going to have to do is apply for a waiver because. If, they're, if the equipment they're selling is on the export administration regulation, then they're required, because Huawei is still on the entity list, to apply for a waiver. And, uh, and according to uh, the current um, enforcement, if there's, a pre there's a presumption of denial of that waiver for national security reasons. So there is a 90-day waiver now for four areas, and that is servicing existing infrastructure, smartphones, dealing with cybersecurity issues, or working on 5G standards. So if they if they have an issue with one of those, then perhaps that that's fixed. That's uh, uh, under the 90-day waiver, they're allowed to do that. But if it's something else, they're going to have to apply for a waiver, and there's a presumption of denial of that waiver on the basis of national security. There okay. is no change to that. Let me ask the John Rutledge. You know, just just listening uh, to, to what was just said, the idea that this is smoke and mirrors. I would imagine that President Xi would have a problem with that. Uh, well, sure. You know, the, the, we're we're into government by tweet now, not government by law and regulation. So these things change overnight. Uh, obviously, uh, a Huawei uh, loosening up on Huawei was an important thing for Xi domestically. But hold on, uh, but John, just go back. Do you believe either they loosened up on Huawei or they didn't? I'm a little confused because I'm hearing Robert effectively say maybe they really didn't. Uh, I understand, but Robert's talking about the, the way the rules work and the process works, and we're talking about a president who uh, sticks a monkey wrench in the process now and again by tweeting, and uh, and so we don't know what we don't know what if anything changed on Saturday, and that's the problem. That's why it's so difficult to do capital spending now because you can't project any cash flows into the future. But this tech war is right in the heart of the dispute between the U.S. and China. And it's in the trade war, and it's right. actually now become foreign policy, not just trade policy. Um, Robert, I want you to react to this. Uh, I had asked uh, Secretary of State Pompeo about the risk that Huawei uh, posed and the claims that the company's CEO had made that it doesn't share information with the Chinese government when he was here in May. And this is what he had to say. To say that they don't work with the Chinese government is, is a false There's statement. There's a law that they must work if asked. He's <laughs> required China to government. by yeah. Chinese law to do that. So uh, it's just uh, the, uh, the Huawei CEO on that at least isn't telling the American people the truth nor the world. Robert, you believe that Huawei is a, a national security threat? Absolutely. And, and what Secretary Pompeo said is absolutely the truth. By law, they're required to cooperate for, for intelligence gathering reasons. Uh, there's been plenty of reports that Huawei personnel have been, uh, you know, caught uh, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. 
Uh, everybody knows it. It's not. It's a. It's a probably the worst kept secret in uh, in D.C. and in other capitals. And you try to shut them down if possible. Well, I think we've already shut them down. I think so. In 2015, when I first went to the Bureau of Industry and Security and asked them about how do we get enforcement on companies like Huawei that are breaking the rules. And what they said was we had to go to, through the White House. For any other country or other, any other company, uh, it, it was enforcement that the Commerce Department itself could do. And so what happened here in the Trump administration is they've actually allowed the bureaucracy to do their job. So these people that do enforcement in DOJ and FBI and the Commerce Department, they're actually right. doing their job in, in enforcing the rules. Robert, let me ask you just a counterpoint. If, if I told you that we were going to go to war with China tomorrow, which I hope, hope never happens, do you believe that the U.S. government would call the Qualcomm's of the world, would call um, all of the different uh, chip makers, Intel, everybody who's, who, who, who's on our side, if you will, and try to use those services uh, in a backdoor way, in the same way that I imagine you think that Huawei would be used? Well, I think that's a completely different... Uh, Notion well, no, as no, today, but, but we're, part we're of this a, whole issue is we're not at war, risk. And, and certainly what what the, Huawei is using the information for is far more pervasive than just a national security issue on, to have, support a crisis. Have you, seen or a have you seen evidence that Huawei, that the Chinese government has used Huawei to spy on the United States? Absolutely, direct evidence. Yes, that's been presented publicly. Yes, can you point to some of that? Well, you can point to. Um, I, well, I can't. I, off the top of my there head, I can't. There isn't any. There, no, there isn't there, any. There, there, Look, <laughs> Huawei's the point of the spear in the growth of China around the world. They're using the One Belt, One Road initiative to drive their foreign policy and their economic policy. U.S. is lagging far behind on, the, on spending money on this. But, uh, you know, the rest of the world wants high-speed technology. They want 5G. Uh, they like the technology they see at Huawei. They think in every country the big companies work with the government. I, I challenge you to find a big U.S. company without government guys walking around with their, for their contracts. Uh, I'm not saying China is a good guy. I'm just saying that it's part of the political football that becomes foreign policy. And foreign policy now is flipping back and forth between the free traders and the neocons. And it's a very unstable situation.